Yeah, that's right. Joe here for Joyrider TV, live from the Wild Wind Boat Park. Just finishing off some uh, Henninger real beer. Um, yeah, it's a good choice. Um, it was quite inexpensive. Excuse me a second. Yeah, it's not a special occasion or anything. Um, it's just been a long day in the office here at Wild Wind uh, Sailing Holidays Beach Club and Resort and um, having a, a, hello Steve, hello, 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 indeed. Having a cold Enning, Henninger seemed like a good idea. Sorry, I'm not particularly well prepared. Who's that? While, while in your shed. Oh yeah, straight in Steve, I think I like it. Yeah, what would you like to take a, anything in particular whilst in the shed? Um, oh, here it, uh, that's Andrew, isn't it? Yeah, hello, Andrew. Nice to have you on board as always. Um, while we're in the shed, here is, um, hello, Frank. Oh, what? Hello, Kush. Hello, James. What size extension goes on the tap? All right, so we're straight in. Um, with some pretty is rudder. All right, I'm gonna. All right, here we go. I'm gonna get me. Not how long. All right, here we go. This. So, what I what I would do is um. So Steve's asked um. How how much extension? So. What I take that to mean, well, what I do, here we go, this is the best thing is, what I do is, I take a bit of, um, this is probably not the question that you're asking, but this is the answer that you're getting, is um, I'll take like a socket, find the one that fits, that sort of best fits, how thick, is the part in your fingers. Um, what's, what size have I got here? 15 mil, too big. Um, yeah, 13 mil, which seems to be pretty standard for everything. And then to get that in, I then maybe put an extension piece on there and then put the socket in the top to, to do that does that make any sense steve um is that is that kind of what you're asking i see yes all right excellent all right that's a that's a strong start i think um yeah so this was for um re-tapping the threads for um for your rudder stocks all right Yeah, um, I, you're not going to believe it, but I have made a video called Service Your Rudder Stocks, which I think addresses this straight away. Do your 10 mil go missing like ours here in the States? 10 mil what? The spanners, everything go... Well, nothing's going missing at the moment because we haven't got any staff. As soon as we have some staff, everything will go missing. That's how it works. Um, all right, so... Oh, sockets. Um, no, not too bad, actually, the, the 10 mil sockets. All right, so I'm just gonna, let's see um, what questions we've already had come in. And hello, by the way, to everybody who's been joining. Um, I'm just gonna take a, a look back through. All right, here we go. Um, Is rudder hum good or bad? Asks Sailing Drift. Um, it's a fine question. What the rudder hum is caused by is a lot of the time, it's, oh my goodness, this is an example of a rudder that has been toasted, but is because the back edge of the rudder blade can be very thin and uh, that back edge 
vibrates while you're going along at speed. And that, of that vibration, I would say, is causing some sort of drag. So for that reason, I would say rudder hum is not making the boat go faster. It will be just acting like the brakes a little bit. But what's nice with the rudder hum is it does give you an indication of um, how fast you're going. And it's like, oh, she's humming now, we must be going fast. So it has got its purpose, but I'd say that rudder hum is not uh, the most optimal thing. So um, with the rudder blade, they're, if they're humming, it might be because they're coming to a point because they're too sharp. Oh, let's, hold on. So, here we are. So, if it's too, too sharp and coming to a, sorry, where do I put the, um, so if it's too sharp and coming to a really fine point, then it's gonna vibrate more. Whereas if you just take a bit of sandpaper and very gently just square off that back edge, then that should reduce the amount of hum that you're getting. If you're using the um, Lexan rudder blades, or hi Matthew, nice to have you on board as always. If you're using these, okay, can you hear this? These are the, let's say the, the low end rudder blades from Hobie. These ones moan. That's different to humming. That's not by... Hi Dean, nice to have you on board. Um, the moaning rudder blade isn't caused by that back edge so much. It's just the whole thing, just moaning. It's kind of like, ah, oh, these rudder blades are so heavy. Okay. Hello, Monica. Nice to have you on board. Hi, Ogle Can. Oh, yeah. Um, well, we've got Ogle Can there. Um, so, last week, um, we had this terrible news of Ogle Can with his new 16. Uh, the mast got snapped in transit. So, this is a miracle um, that I managed to find quite an old mast um, because we don't have a lot spare mast here hello hello stefan um but i found quite an old mast that we've had hanging around for a very long time and it turned out it's actually a two-piece mast and um and here she is managed to separate it so this is the the top piece and this is the bottom piece um you can sort of tell it's quite old because it's gone that um, I think James has described this as plum colour. So there we go. There, there is the mast awaiting delivery to Turkey. All right, I'm just going to get out of the sun a little bit. It's, it's, um, the heat has really been turned up here. Okay, I'm just going to scroll back. Hi, Dawson. Nice to have you on board. Um, okay. All right, so getting a bit, here's Frank in um, Canada, um, getting a bit too much water in my starboard hull. Yeah, um, I don't know if, does, I dare say the Prindle has bungs like the Hobies do, but the one thing that gets overlooked quite a lot if you're getting water into the hulls, um, in especially in lighter conditions, when you're um, you're definitely not capsizing or taking water in, kind of like through the beams. So if the water's not getting anywhere near the beams, then the most likely thing is the water is going to be getting in somewhere here, um, and. The first place and less least intrusive place to look is with the bungs. Just make sure that um, the bung thread in the, the housing is clean and it hasn't got bits of sand or something in there. And then check that your bung has got a good seal on it. So it should have a seal like this. 
and it's the seal that's going to stop it from leaking. So I would say that would be the first place to check. Once you've checked there, if that looks good, then it might be something holding the gudgeon or gudgeons onto the back of the boat. So maybe it's worth, if you can, taking those screws out, putting some sealant in and then putting the screws back in. But if you are, if you are ever thinking of taking the screws out of your gudgeon, just do one at a time, put some, uh, oh, happens more in windy conditions, seal bungs and beams. Ooh, that's a tough one then. Um, what, um, what we've done here, in fact, to find out where boats are leaking, this might sound quite extreme, is um, we've actually made a special bung with, uh, what would you call it, like a, a bike pump valve um, going onto the pump, going, on to, going through, so we, exactly Steve, yes, yeah, so we put a hole through the bung, like a sacrificial bung, and you could even just put like the middle part of a biro through that hole so that your bike pump will attach to it and then cover the hull in soap and then pump pump her, pump her up and then see where the bubbles are coming out and that should spray soapy water about and blow into the drain hole yeah same uh, same thing just less um less pumping yeah, so, um, yeah, I think that's a good, that would be a good suggestion if it is an absolute, an absolute uh, mystery there. All right, let's, uh, we're just going to scroll back. I hope that helps in some way there, Frank. It is disappointing when your boat leaks. Uh, you know, that is the truth. Hello, Martin25. Any new cats in your fleet? Well, since last year, the answer is no. We were due to be getting um, the biggest advance to catamaran sailing in the Wildwind fleet in years, which was gonna be a foiling Viper from Goodall Design. But unfortunately, because we've effectively lost half of the season, we can't afford to get it. So we're not getting it. Uh, the newest boat that we've got is the C2, which is also from Goodall Design, which is an F18, which is an absolute bad boy. Um, it's, this thing uh, runs on uh, gas. Um, it's cooking on gas and it is ridiculous. Hello, Jeff. Um, I've tried that too, no luck. Oh my goodness. All right, I think this is where we ask the community what do we do um, to find out where the Prindle 15 is taking in water? Okay, you can uh, have a think. All right. So just scrolling back. Do you use, uh, this is from uh, Andrew, I believe, in Florida somewhere. Um, do you use any sort of wax on your hulls? That's quite a short answer. No, um, we don't. We don't really put anything on the hulls. We uh, we wash them after sailing, um, and uh, they get a polish once a year. But that is it. So uh, no, the hulls are just um, it's just how nature intended, and they seems to go quite nicely. How to tie? jib sail to closed end thimble my goodness kush i absolutely don't understand your question i'm i'm getting that it's about the jib but what is a closed end thimble um yeah if you could rephrase the question there kush i'll um i'll uh try to come up with uh, a rephrased answer but my answer at the moment is i don't understand um, sorry. Okay. Oh, end of the cable in the jib. 
end of the cable in the jib. Um, is that the, the cable for hoisting the, the jib that you're interested in there? Um, we haven't actually got any jibs up in the boat park at the moment, but um, we're just, um, if we go for a Hobie 16, what we're, what we're into is, uh, I don't know if this is kind of what you mean, but on the chain plate at the front, we're attaching that using a, uh, a clevis pin. And then on the head of the sail, we're, um, this is the jib halyard. Uh, we're just using a shackle onto the head of the sail, if that is what you mean. Um, I think yeah Kush let me know if that was what your cable that is tied to sail oh okay I've got you yes okay I've got you the cable running through the luff the wire luff I'd call that okay let's have a look um all right we hi Isaac nice to have you on board as always um, okay we're entering into a box of sails here oh my goodness the excitement so I can't really see very much because it's so sunny oh thank you Isaac I'm glad you're enjoying what has been coming out okay let's got a jib here yeah so this is a bit of a cheap hold on which way is this pointing uh can we see all right yeah so this is a bit of a cheat this is um a hobie 16 jib fresh from the factory but um this is so this is the the eye and then it's got this is the same fitting as a bow tang on a 16 and it's kind of uh pressed through there but you don't always have the opportunity to do that so sometimes you have to do that with a rope instead I'll just see if I've got one which is done with a rope uh, I'm having a look I'm going in I'm not gonna uh, no that's the same uh, that's actually the same sail and uh, yeah I might I might not actually have one in here because uh, all of our sails are pretty much the same age. Uh, what, what have we got here? Um, yeah, that's the same. But okay, so um, God, I've got to get out of the sun again. It's so it's so sunny. This place, my goodness. All right, um, and this is a good spot. This is a good place. Um, yeah, so the the cable running through the jib, the ones, the stock ones coming from Hobie Cat, have um, been kind of like had a effectively a bow tang put on there and then pressed in. But if you don't have that, then if you take a bit of two mil or two and a half mil rope pretty much anything will do at all and then tie that two mil to the end of the wire go through the cable go round between the cable and the eye in the sail maybe four times maybe six times round and round and then after you've done that go round and round doing a half hitch each time that is quite a tidy way to do it but what you need to do is do it with the jib up um do it with the jib in the up position because you need to get the tension right that you're putting into that cable okay i hope that answers your question there kush um all right going oh yes i'm glad that answered the question that was uh quite a all right let's see This is very exciting times, Jeff, our roving reporter from Gear Report has been roving and getting, show us your cat. 
So very much looking forward to seeing that. I think he's actually been out on the fastest Hobie 16 in the world, which is very exciting indeed. So I'm just uh, trying to find a better position because uh, it's just too, it's just too bright. Um, oh, that's better. Okay. All right. So just. Uh, All right, so we've got Marius from Poland in my Hobie, Hobie Cat 17. The rudder blades tend to unhook while sailing in winds above 10 knots. They don't want to stay down. Ouch, how do you set them? This is a rudder tuning question, I believe. Um, yeah, so what we do is we adjust the tension on the cams. Um, if you, all right, should we? Yeah, all right, this is, this is the let's go to the workshop question because so, I've got some rudder stocks in there that we can have a look at. So um, we're just setting off. This is um, very exciting. We're setting off across the boat park in real time here. And we're gonna be going into the workshop to take a look at a rudder stock. Okay, here we go in real time. Oh, while I'm doing this, that question from Steve's quite interesting. When is your interview with Jeff going on your page? I watched it live, but was hoping to catch the end. Um, that's not a bad question there, Steve. Okay, I'll put it on my Facebook page later and perhaps I'll put a link from the on the community tab on the YouTube channel as well. All right, so here we are. Here is our rudder stock. So if your rudder's coming up too easily, it's because there's focus can we focus um because there's not enough tension in the cam this is a poor example this um but um so this is the position of the cam when there is and if as you go out in more than a certain amount of wind there's too much pressure on the rudder blade that cam if that is allowed to flip back up then your rudder will come up oh i'll find a better one All right, here's a better one. Need to make an adjustment. For a much true, if you haven't touched your screw, if you haven't touched that in years, especially if you're sailing on salt water, then are we buffering? Okay. Uh, are, we, are we back on? Could somebody let me know? Are we back on? Are we in the now? Um, yeah, but if you haven't touched that screw in a long time and you're sailing on salt water, then... Hi, Calvin. Nice to have you on board. As always, um, then there is a chance that's going to be seized up, in which case you need to check out the servicing your rudders video. As usual, I'll put together a list of all these videos afterwards so you'll know where to find them. OK, there we go. That was your uh, explanation of the rudder issues that we face on a daily basis okay all right just scrolling back oh i think um the community have answered this question for isaac but can you can you I'll do a show on how you can tell the gust is coming. I'm intrigued. I'm equally intrigued. Um, so for, to answer this question, we're going to need some water. And what better piece of water than Vasiliki Bay? Oh, yeah. All right. So just... And there is some shade here. This is great news. Um, yeah. I'm not complaining about the sun. 
just making it difficult to see the screen um, a little bit on the uh, telephone. So what we're looking for, for gusts, is um, we're looking for out there somewhere, we're looking for a darker patch of water. So you, we can see slightly different shades on the water. It's like on virtual regatta, in fact, we're, the darker feed is dodgy. All right, hold on. Thanks for letting me know, James. I'm going to, it's because I'm moving around. I think I'm on the Wi-Fi, not on the 4G. All right, I'm just going to change my, hopefully they're still here. Oh, it says we're live. So hopefully that will be a bit better. Sorry about the bad connection there. Yeah, so back on the gusts. So what we're looking for is a darker patch of water. But of course, a darker patch of water somewhere where the, um, somewhere where the, uh, the water is fairly clear. A darker patch could be caused by something on the seabed. So you've got to kind of look and just use your sort of, um, your Sherlock Holmes sort of skills to work out whether that's because of something under the water or because of the water on top. If it's sunny, then it might be because um, you might be looking for a shinier patch of water. What if I point this directly at the sun? Because there is a bit of an example. Can we see this? Can you see that on the uh, screen right there? You can see where it's really shiny and then it goes really smooth. This is quite an extreme example, but this is actually a gust coming down. You can see this is a gust coming across the bay in real time. Amazing. This is actually a very good explanation, I think. So there we go. What we're looking for is that. Yeah, thanks very much uh, to everyone for enjoying that very, as much as I did. That was a great day out. Okay, so just... Uh, um, hello, Bongo Fat Fairy. Um, good to have you on board. Um, in this live Q and A, hello Christian G13, always a pleasure. Scrambled, how to MW? Ooh, I think you might have to elaborate a little bit on that one. Oh, how to make your Hobie 16 ready for seals? Um. Yeah, you might have to elaborate slightly on that question. Um, I'm not sure. Seals, what could that be? Sorry, not, not getting that um, at this time. Perhaps if you rephrase the question there. <laughs> Bongo, your name is so silly, but that's the joy of... Oh, how to make your Hobie 16 ready for sealing. Okay, just uh, I'm just sort of scrolling back. Hi, Antoine. Nice to have you on board. For sealing. What could that be? How to make your Hobie 16 ready for sealing. Uh, right, I'll, co I'll come back to you um, scrambled when we have a bit more time to um, try to work out what it is that you're asking there a bit. And the next one, can you explain reading a telltale, the indicator on the sails? Yes, we can. Let's do that. And for this one, I'm gonna use another prop. And this time, yeah, we, we are in motion, uh, proceeding across in real time. But um, because I haven't got any sails up, what, oh, actually we could use a sail on a dinghy. That would be all right, wouldn't it? Telltales on the two grand? Yeah, lovely. Oh, right, one of the... Okay, we're gonna use a dinghy to have a look at some telltales. All right, we're just um, in real time proceeding across the boat park here. It's, uh, it's 
it's quite spread out with with definitely putting some uh, mileage down today all right here we've we've actually got a laser 2000 i know it's not a catamaran but it has got a jib on it um and the jib has got telltales this is what we were hoping for all right of course the jib's got telltales because this is a highly reputable sailing establishment here all right just bear with me a sec i'm uh, just getting organized i think this is something that we can all enjoy is a bit of telltales all right let's flip this round mega all right so here we go so generally speaking we've got telltales on both sides of the sail um we've got what we could call this side and then the one we could just see through the sail there we'll call that the other side so what we're looking for ideally what is going to indicate that we're having a good flow of air over both sides of the sail is to have both telltales flowing straight backwards like this now there are two ways that we can adjust what is happening to the flow of air over the sail this is the same for the main sail and the jib um, one thing we can alter is the sheet um, so if we if we pull the set if we pull the sail in what this is going to do is the inside um all right let's hold on let's go for a better explanation here slightly um so if this telltale on the inside isn't flying straight back so the next thing it will do if it's not flying straight back is it could fly up like this or actually flying right up if that's not flying straight back what we can do is pull the sail in more until it's flying straight back so this one on the inside not flying straight back is basically an early indication of the sail flapping so that is very useful um yeah so if it's not flying straight back and you want it to then using the sheet you pull the, the sheet in until it's flying straight back so the most common time you would do that would be if you're perhaps sailing on a reach on a course across the wind um, and you can use the sheet in and out just to try to get that in the sweet spot of course the telltale on the opposite side of the sail you'll do the opposite for so if that one's not flying if you want to get it flying you let the sheet out until it starts flying that's an indication of the sail being in too tight so it's always better to have the sail too loose rather than too tight a sail that's too tight will cause you to have stalled airflow which is really bad ah oh, how to rig your hobie 16 thanks for um clearing that up i'll come on to that as once we finish this telltale story um yeah so if the outside one isn't flying let the sail out if the inside one isn't flying pull the sail in if neither of the telltales are flying then usually that will mean you need to let the sail out so um as a as a general rule the entry of the sail to the wind should be at the same angle as the wind as it comes onto the boat on your catamaran of course you've you should have some sort of wind indicator at the front which you can then line that wind indicator up with the front of your jib or the front of your mainsail uh, to get a general idea of where you should put it so that's changing the telltales by using the sheet the other way you can do it which is more what you do on an upwind course is steer the boat um, so instead of altering the angle of the sail you alter the angle of the whole boat and keep the sail in the same position so in that situation if the telltale on the inside isn't flying straight back you come away from the wind slightly and the opposite if the telltale on the other side isn't flying you'd want to come up towards the wind slightly um, um, but the thing is with the upwind sailing as you get into more wind to be 
to know that you're sailing close to the wind, you're not actually going to be sailing with this straight back. You're going to be allowing this one to lift because the way that we're sailing a catamaran as the wind gets stronger upwind is by sailing a bit closer to the wind than the telltale wants us to. I hope that was a fairly good explanation there. Um, so um, that is the explanation that we're going to be going for at this time. Okay, thank you very much. All right, so here we go. How to make your Hobie 16 ready for sailing. Um, Scram build, I think he said, is he's from the Netherlands. No problem with the English. Your English is 100% better than my uh, my Dutch. So uh, <laughs> you don't have anything to worry about there. So, but all right, so to rig uh, a Hobie cat, a Hobie 16, ready for sailing. Now, rather than going through it now, which would be quite time consuming, um, and I'm not gonna do that just now, um, I've done various videos on the preparation of the Hobie 16. So if it's building the whole boat from scratch, I'll put a link to that video on after we've finished. And if it's just the pulling up the sails, putting the main sheet on, uh, we can go through, there's a video going through all that as well, which I've, I've already made, made, which to be honest, would be much better than me just trying to explain it just now. I hope that's okay. I hope that's okay. I'm just, tr just trying to do what I can for everyone in the time that we have available. So on the Calvin, would you, would you recommend upgrading a Hobie 14 to a turbo or selling and just buying a Hobie 16? That is one of the toughest questions that there is. Um, yeah, there's, I've had this question quite a few times in the past couple of days, actually, and it is, it's not an easy one. If I'd say if you are exclusively like every single time going to be sailing single-handed and you want the boat to be quite light, easy to manage both on land and on the water. If you want it to be easier to pull up after a capsize and just generally all the benefits that you'll get from having a lighter weight boat, uh, which is smaller, then I think you guess where I'm going with this, then the Hobie 14 would be the boat to stick with. And it would certainly, if you've got a 14, definitely worth upgrading to the turbo, which means you're adding the jib and I believe the trapeze from the traditional 14, which just uh, doesn't have either of those um, items on board. So yeah, definitely worth upgrading your 14 to a turbo. But if you're considering sailing with other people and you want a boat which perhaps Oh yeah, okay, I'm um, just gonna answer this now. Scrambled, where can I find that? Um, on the Joyrider TV channel, um, there'll be a playlist on there called, oh, I can't remember now, this is a test. Um, boat preparation, perhaps? But um, I'll um, put a link so that you can find that after we finish the, uh, the live Q and A. Should you upgrade to a 16? If you want to sail with other people, then yes. If you want to sail a bit further, having a bigger boat is going to make you... Um, having a bigger boat is basically going to make you safer to sail a larger distance. Thanks, Andre, for stepping in there. Very kind of you. Um, yeah, so... or. Yeah, but the main reason for going for the 16 would be if you're occasionally going to be sailing with somebody else or if you're going to be sailing predominantly in lighter winds, the 16 is going to have a bit more juice there. Um, and it's just a bigger boat, but it is more to manage on the beach. So that is a very difficult question. I hope that helps um, 
in some way. All right, let's scroll back. Oh, what did James say? If you're chunky, a 16, that is the truth. Oh, here we go, back to the telltales. We've got Stefan in Munich who says he'd separate the height of the telltales for, by a few centimetres so that they're easier to see. Very wise words coming from a very experienced sailor there. Um, all right, scrolling back. All right, oh, this is good. What temperature today? I, I don't know, I, I'm not very good at um, guessing the temperature, but I would say we're, we're looking at high 20s and um, been swimming just in shorts of late and uh, it's been pleasant. So there we go, uh, pleasant. A few questions like that definitely help. Ones that are quite quick to answer. All right, just scrolling back. And we're on to, we're on to Frank on uh, Lake Ontario. I believe quite close to Niagara Falls. Uh, must make it a very, that's probably quite an exciting place to sail. Um, when you're trapezing solo and the telltales are perfect, is there any other way to make your boat go faster? It's more wind, yes, but um, then what we're looking at is the point of sail that you're putting the boat on. Um, so let's say to get set up on the trapeze, um, you'll probably see this if you analyze any of my kind of onboard uh, videos when I'm doing some big speeds, is uh, the easiest point of sail to get set up on the trapeze would be like a close reach or an upwind point of sail. And then once you're comfortable on the trapeze, then to take your boat off the wind onto a beam reach, so sailing across the wind, um, that is going to be faster. So then as we take the boat further away from the wind, all right, so hold on, let's, um, I'm just going to try to rephrase this a bit. So if you're sailing directly across the wind on, let's call it a beam reach or a half wind point of sail, that's going to be pretty quick. So having the telltales perfect is going to be quite fast, but that's not going to make you go fast enough to dominate on the speed stick. Then what you need to do is you need to be transferring energy, the energy that's making the hull lift to more speed. How can you do this? Okay, what you can do is as the hull lifts, that means that we can sail more downwind and so as the hull lifts, easing a bit of sheet, turning more downwind, keeping the hull out of the water. And then once you're on your new course, just adjusting the sheet again. So that is how we're getting the boat going as fast as possible. If you can trapeze, hull out of the water, going as deep as possible, that is how you're gonna get the top speed. I think that pretty much clears it up. Um, I'll get a, a blackboard or a whiteboard um, ready for next week's Q. In fact, next week I might, well, this could be a shocker, next week um, might have to reschedule the Q&A because I think in answer, I think I saw Monica ask, do you have an update on when you'll open, when or if? Yes, this is a double whammy of a, an answer, is next, this time next week, in fact, we will be open. So if you can get here, we've got what you need. Um, and apparently we're getting big barrels of uh, detergent that we're gonna be um, cleansing the boats with uh, in between people using them. And there'll be some precautions that will be taken there and regulation hoops that we'll be jumping through. But um, yes, we will be open next week. So that is exciting. Um, so do pop down if you're in the area.
Okay, Scrambled, I'm going to answer this straight away. Is the 16 a good boat to start on? And I, I think, did you say you're 12 years old there? Um, the 16 is a good boat to start on, but perhaps um, it depends on how much wind you're going to be sailing in. For light wind sailing, the Hobie 16 will teach you good technique. That's what it will give you. Um, so there's no reason why the Hobie 16 isn't a good boat for a beginner. It's going to be more difficult than one of these bad boys that I just happen to have in front. On the right here, these are Hobie 15s, which are much, much easier to sail. But the thing with the 15 is you, you won't find as many 15s available um, to buy. Uh, they're a bit more rare because the Hobie 16 is the most popular catamaran in the world and there's a lot of them about. So the likelihood of you finding a used Hobie 16 is quite high, whereas a 15, a bit more tricky. Next door to those without the trampoline on, this is actually the boat which is designed for your purpose. And this is the Dragoon. Um, the Dragoon, that is a great question there, Mr. Stang. Um, this is the Dragoon, which is a 13 foot Hobie, which is actually designed for people of your age to learn to sail on. Um, it's got a much smaller sail, which means you'll be able to take it out in much more wind. Um, it's quite, uh, it's very easy to sail. Um, but again, um, they're a little bit more difficult to find special second hand used um, for sale because there's not so many of them about. So I hope that answers your question at least to a degree. Okay, scrolling back. Scrolling back, here we go. Um, okay, we've got quite a lot of questions here on the scroll back. All right. Nice, okay. We're just having a look on the scroll back. Oh, this is a good question from D. Jonathan. When should you wear a helmet? Just on foiling cats? No, I've changed my tune. I, um, up until last year, I never wore a helmet to go sailing, but um, I had a concussion. I didn't enjoy it at all. The concussion wasn't sailing, it was, um, it was at home, but it was absolutely horrible. And what I didn't want was to ever have that again. Um, Um, yeah, so I didn't want that to happen again. So what I consider to be the right time to put the helmet on is if you're going out sailing and you're finding, you're feeling that there is a fairly good chance that you're going to stack it. If you think I'm probably going to capsize, then I would say the sensible choice would be to put on a helmet because even on a boat without a boom, that mast is pretty hard. And if you lose your footing on the trapeze, uh, get spun round while you're flying through the air mid capsize and you land on the mast on the back of your head or something, um, that could leave you feeling a bit uh, wobbly. Whereas if you had a helmet on, you'd be all right. But if I, if I don't think there's much of a chance of a capsize, then I still won't wear a helmet because um, I like the feeling of the wind in my hair, of course. Um, but also, uh, for my purposes, um, with the helmet on, the camera doesn't pick up the sound as well. Whereas without the helmet on, with just the camera on my head, I get the sound better for the videos. Because a lot of the time when I go sailing, I'm making these videos. Um, so there we are. That's my opinion on that. All right. Just scrolling back. All right. 16 equals more beans. Correct, Calvin. All right. Gabe has an old 14 solo. So, uh, turbo, sorry. Often sail it with a friend. 
Um, yeah, it's, it is a hard boat to tack. That's the thing with the 14. It's probably the hardest boat to tack that there is outside of Polynesia with these strange um, proas, I believe they're called. Um, but the, the 14 is just very difficult. I would suggest a video here, which was um, just from about two weeks ago where I went out on the 14 troubleshooting, tacking. And having two people on the boat is going to add an element to that, of course, but it shouldn't make it impossible. So check out that video on troubleshooting the tacking. I won't go through all the details just now um, because uh, it's all there in that video and it, um, that should also make you feel like you're not alone with um, occasionally doing bad tacks. Everybody is doing that. Okay, scrolling back. All right, scrolling back, here we go. Um, Calvin says my 14 sets low and slow when you get to 400 pounds. Yeah, it will do. Um, I would say for a 14, you don't, you don't want to be sailing that with much more than, this is going to sound pretty low, but 120 kilos, which I think is at 200 and something like 250 pounds. What's 100 kilos? Two, uh, 220. Oh, so that would be 440, 440 pounds um, on a 14 would be enough. All right. Scrolling back. Yeah, so I think Gabe is definitely in the bracket for the Hobie 16, judging by the fact that you're sailing with three people. The 14 is going to punish you for having too much weight on the boat. And here we are back. Oh, so I'll just check and see I haven't missed anything. Um, okay, we've got William. Your boats are moored throughout the day. Do you have anything to prevent the mast from rotating and hammering the stops? No, uh, we don't do anything at all to do to stop that. Um, the thing that we've got in our favour is the water stays pretty flat all the time, even when it's windy. We always... Uh, when we're mooring the boats, leave the downhaul completely off, which means that the mast isn't rotating quite as much. If you had the downhaul on, then the battens would pop from one side to the other, um, creating the mast to rotate a lot, which would bang your stops. Can we say banging your stops? Um, yeah, so we're letting the downhaul off. That's going to help. And keeping the rig tension on as well. I think that probably helps a bit too. But yeah, so we're not taking any other precautions to stop that mast rotation happening. But the downhaul off is definitely the key on that one. Okay, just, just, scroll, just scrolling back. Aha, Mr. Bongo. Can a Hobie 16 sail in open ocean or kind of rough conditions? Give me the rough conditions and I want to get out there. Yes, it can. Um, the Hobie 16 was designed for sailing in surf originally. Um, so rough conditions, yes, it can do. But the rougher the conditions, the more of a skilled operator needs to be operating that boat. Otherwise, you're going to be spending quite a lot of time in the capsized position. Uh, yes, it can, definitely. And the Hobie 16 is, as well as all of the other great things about it, is really, really strong. Um, I do love, oh, which, I'm gonna answer this one from Brian now. If you've already asked a question that I haven't answered, please don't repeat the question in capital letters. I think we've moved on since then. Um, 
but Brian says how much flex from pontoon to pontoon is considered allowable. Thanks. Yeah, um, I think let's we're we're out. We just moved out of the shade and into the sun again. Uh, it's all a bit. Uh, yeah, we've still got a bit of sun left. Okay, so the first thing is with your with the flex, you need you, it is a good idea to identify where that movement is coming from. And um, if the movement is coming from between the casting and the pylon, then that is all right. It's like your boat isn't going your boat isn't going to be destroyed. Um, if there is a lot of movement between the casting and the pylon, what you could do is it will involve taking your boat apart, which I know is a bit of an effort, but you can take your boat apart or even without taking the boat apart, maybe take the bolt out and then get some thin plastic, like packaging plastic, uh, cut into strips and get them shoved up in the gap between the casting and the pylon to make the boat stiffer. Um, now, the problem is going to be if you've got movement between the pylon and the hull. That is alarm bells ringing if you've got movement there. Um, if you have, you're going to have to take your boat to a boat builder to basically cut a hole in it somewhere, maybe a, a hatch in the deck there, and then they'll have to go in and basically there's a big block at the bottom of the pylon which will need uh, re-glassing into the hull. But I think the 16 is going to flex a fair bit. Um, yeah, obviously the tighter and less flex that you have between the hulls, the better, but I hope that helps to some degree. Um, yeah, so, but I would certainly check that out. Right, I'm just running back for the shade because otherwise I really can't see what is written on the screen. Um, all right, here we go. Here we go. Back in this spot, which is working quite nicely. Um, Some questions to come on to that one. Okay. Aha, a very good question from Smoking Stang. We saw his boat in the garage in, I think about three or four episodes ago of Show Us Your Cat. He said, what are the sunnies? Um, I've been wearing this brand of sunglasses for probably at least 15 years now. These are dirty, dogs these are from australia and um i've found this brand to be everything that i'm looking for both uh cost effective uh they're very durable um but and they fit i've got quite a big face which means you've definitely got to find sunglasses that fit these this particular model is called the axle and you're not going to believe it but you can, f I've actually listed these in my Amazon storefront. So if you want to get a set, then I'll put a link somewhere at some point, or just look at the links in um, any of my videos. If you go down in the description, there's links to all this stuff that basically means I get a little bit of money from Amazon. And let's face it, they can afford it. Um, so um, yeah, if you want to get some, some of these sunnies, then uh, head over to my Amazon store. But I think that only works if you use Amazon.com. If you're in Europe, uh, those links apparently don't work unless you want to order stuff from America. All right. So, great question though. All right. Um, I think we're doing quite well here. All right, I'm going to, as soon as I've got to the end of the questions, I'm going to tie this up because we've been an hour now. And... Um, all right, so Mr. Bongo, are we are we on to? Oh no, we we haven't gone back far enough. Beg your pardon. 
Um, all right, a very good question from Dean. Do you send t-shirts, etc., to Australia? Oh yes, um, if you want a t-shirt in Australia, um, it will be getting shipped from, um, all the t-shirts in my online store are shipping from the UK. Um, I'm just starting to ship some uh, beaters from Greece as well, which I'm actually printing myself using a printing machine that was um, very kindly given to me by uh, Dick, who's a 16 sailor from the UK. Uh, very kind. It's a great thing to have in your quiver. But um, yes, we are shipping to Australia. Just, uh, just uh, off you go shop until you drop because it's all very good all right where are we up to um i think steve has found a dragoon on apollo duck which is a website in the uk for secondhand boats okay here's one from stefan i think this is a suggestion rather than a question to frank when you're going for bearing away in the gusts never cleat in yeah, so it doesn't need to be quite as critical as Stefan is saying. What you could do is when you sheet out in the gust, we're back on going for speed. When you sheet out in the gust, or sorry, when you bear away from a beam reach to a broad reach to get more speed, just let out more main sheet than you need to and then pull it in again. You don't need to be right on the edge all the time. So get sailing. It would go, I'll, I'll go this way. So let's assume that the wind is blowing this way straight across, which it is actually, the wind's just gone cross shore, which is nice, takes the edge off the heat. So we're sailing this way, hull's lifting slightly. So we're gonna go for speed. We're gonna go right, we're gonna send it. So as you bear away, dump a load of sheet and that should keep you safe. And then once you're on your new course, which would be the difference between there and there, check out any of my videos to see it in action. Um, once you're there, pull the sheet in again, but pull it in carefully. And th like I've said several times, the more that you play the main sheet, the more that you know where you are in relation to, are you going to capsize? All right, Avit, is that Avit? Um, says, have you ever tried the inflatable mini cat? I haven't, but um, somebody else asked this question the other day and I directed them to one of the episodes of Show Us Your Cat, where there was a chap sailing the mini cat near to Paris in France. I can't remember what episode number it was off the top of my head, something like 14. Um, and uh, there's a mini cat featured in that and it certainly looks for an inflatable cat certainly does everything that you would want it to and very good for storage. Okay, scrolling down. Oh, where am I sailing? This is, uh, we're in Greece. This is uh, Vasiliki Bay, uh, which is at the south end of the island of Lefkas, where it's... Uh, very good for sailing. Uh, all right. Here we go. Uh, D. Jonathan asks, how exactly do you drift backwards when you want to get to the beach? If there's big waves, I had to do it once, but I'm no longer sure whether to put the rudder blades up or not. If you're, well, there's the first thing. If you're going backwards with the rudders down, you need to be absolutely positive that you're not gonna hit the bottom. The rudders are only gonna kick up if you're going forwards. If you're going backwards and you touch the bottom, um, if, you go, well, if you're going backwards with any speed on, you're either gonna snap your rudder pins. This is why the Hobie 16 has aluminium rudder pins but some other boats have uh, stainless steel or inox rudder pins, 
which aren't going to snap, um, they'll bend, probably snap the gudgeons off the back of your boat. So if you're going into a beach backwards, definitely lift your rudders. But then you may ask, how do you keep the boat going straight? What you do is you go um, to the bow of the boat. If you're sailing with two people, helm on one bow, crew on the other bow, and then the boat will keep going straight because the bows of the boat will act like a rudder and uh, you'll go straight into the beach. You're not gonna believe it, I did a video, a very entertaining video on sailing backwards. I'll link that one later, but um, we go out sailing backwards to see how fast you can actually go backwards. But um, it highlights all these uh, techniques. So there we go. All right, I'm gonna start making shorter answers because uh, I think we're getting there. All right. So Mr. Bongo was thinking of sailing through the rip, Port Phillip Bay entrance. Oh my goodness. Yeah, it's doable, but do a lot of sailing on in less harsh conditions first. just to make sure you have got full control of the boat before you're um, going out there in a potentially dangerous situation. Um, okay. Okay. It's one from Frank. Um, in fact, Frank, I've just finished filming for this video on downhaul settings. So hopefully I'll have time to put that together this evening. Um, working 24 hours a day at the moment to do boat stuff on the beach here and video stuff, but it's uh, just what I'm into. Um, when you're using downhaul and you look at the wrinkles to flatten out the sail, which part of the sail are you looking for wrinkles? The whole sail, yes, if you've got um, what's that called? Horizontal creases in the sail, then you want to pull the downhaul a bit more to start with to get those out. If you've got vertical creases in the sail, that will usually be coming from not having enough tension in the battens. But yes, you're looking at the whole sail for those uh, horizontal creases with the downhaul. But um, keep an eye out for this. I've just finished filming a video on the downhaul and the outhaul and um, a very concise explanation of how to use those controls. What tiller extension brand or type would you recommend for trapezing? That's an easy one. I'd recommend a fairly long tiller extension. No brand, unbranded is the best brand. Um, what we're using here is on, our, on a lot of the boats, we're using lengths of aluminium tube because we, were, we did used to buy our tiller extensions from Hobie, but it's so expensive and one bad capsize and you've broken it. So this is just a length of aluminium tube. Um, if you want it a bit nicer, uh, and hey, why not have it a bit nicer if you've got a lovely boat, which you really like, then a bit nicer is always nice. Oh, I haven't got any on at the moment. Um, oh yes, I have. Then on um, what you can do is actually source a piece of, of carbon tube, um, which we're paying for, I think for two and a half meters, or it might even be three meters of carbon tube. We're paying something like 40 pounds, um, which, for 40 pounds, you can have a carbon tiller extension. And then all you need to do is take your old fitting off your old one and just work out a way of attaching it into the bottom of the carbon tube. Might take a bit of doing, but it's well worth it. So here we've just got the old fitting bolted through with a bit of reinforcement over the top to make that part stronger. But that is a really worthwhile thing to do. Make your own tiller extension. 
<laughs> More juicy questions coming in. All right. Just closing my box. All right, I'm just going to go for a different bit of shade just so I can see. All right, I'm just going to try to... Um, I've got to try to wrap this up, I'm afraid, because we're on to 70 minutes now. All right. How many GoPros have you lost at sea? Two. Uh, one was actually surfing in Cape Town and one, I'd actually put one on the top of a mast and I'd kind of forgotten that it was there. And then afterwards I got in, I thought this footage is gonna be amazing. Looked up the mast and it was gone. Uh, disappointing. Always tie your camera on. Okay. Did you ever sail a 29er or 49er from Trax Z? Or is that Trax Z? Um, yes, I sailed the 49er. Um, it's a very challenging boat and you need to be sailing as a team on a 49er. I never actually sailed a 29er, although we've got two. But um, 29er is a youth boat and um, I'm too old. <laughs> no, it's not true. But um, the 49er is an absolute mean machine. Re it's probably the most ex most excitement you could possibly get in under 10 knots of wind. Any update on new flags? <laughs> I've saved a spot on my force day. No, um, to be honest, Calvin, at the moment, um, I contacted the... F so Calvin was after... So, of course, as I'm sure that you're aware, I've got flags for sale. It's true. Um, send me an email if you want a flag. Um, I've actually got some stationed with James in the, in the USA at the moment. So it's not even like you'd have to get it shipped from the UK, uh, from Greece. Um, if you're in the US, you could get flags shipped from the US uh, from James, who's a frightfully nice chap and he's very kindly doing that for me. Um, but um, I spoke to the supplier and the cost of the postage to do small numbers of flags where is actually the postage is more expensive than the flags which um is pretty twitchy but um when i get a bit more organized yes i'm going to supply uh start to produce some smaller flags but at the moment i've got i'm not going to lie to you i've got quite a big box of the bigger flags um as it's very sad but everybody everybody was saying Joe, we want flags. So I, I said, okay, I'll get some flags made. And uh, since I had the flags made, I've still got, I'm not gonna say almost as many flags left as I bought, but um, a significant amount of flags left. So come on, buy a flag. Uh, they're, they're very nice and they've got a good size to them. Two styles. Check it out in the online store. But um, I'd suggest don't order it in the online store. Um, just send me an email and we'll do something better for postage. All right. There we go. That was my sort of uh, thing about flags. Um, how hard are rudders supposed to be to pull up? Not too hard. I think if your rudders are really hard to pull up, then there is something a little bit out of whack with the way that you've got them set up. Um, I'm just tr going to try to get through these questions quickly now as we've been going for quite some time. So I would suggest again, the service your rudders video, that should explain everything that you should do. I get the impression that yours are too hard to pull up, which, um, oh God, I said I was going to do it quickly, but I'm just too enthusiastic, um, which, First point of con of attack should be the bolt here and the bolt here. Just give those a tweak. Make sure your rudder blade actually goes up and down quite easily in the stocks. Um, but for more than that, um, the service your rudder blades video. Right, next. Do you maybe want to sail with me, Anton? Depends where you are. Um, if you come to Vasiliki, I will come out of you. But if you don't mind, if I could steer, um, I do like steering. But um, I tell you what, if it's not too windy, you can st you steer and I'll be the crew. 
There you go, Steve got a carbon one today for 85 pounds. That would be tiller extension. James asks, how did you refinish your mast? That's quite a juicy question, James. I'm actually gonna, you could see the mast just there on the trailer, um, where's the finger? That's my tornado mast. And I spent a very long time stripping it and then recoating it. And it does look amazing. Um, I'm gonna make a video on the process. I didn't actually video the whole process. Thank you, Jeff. Yeah, you could shoot off if you want. Um, if it, well, of course you can. You know, I'm not holding anybody to ransom here. Um, all right, we're just going for a quick look at this. We've still got the masking tape off on. I just haven't had time to finish it off and refit it and everything. But oh my goodness, she looks so sweet. I uh, can't wait to get it on the boat. That is, of course, the mast for my own boat which is a tornado bad boy 94 is its name thank you very much james it is gorgeous you're quite right um quite pleased with that because i don't do a lot of that sort of stuff so it's nice to do something different aha good suggestion there from stefan pick up a flag while you're on holiday at wildwind saves the shipping cost all right scrolling back um Okay, Frank, that, that is a good question. This is one of the videos that has been on my kind of video that I have to make radar for quite a while now, and that is how to make a writing pole system. Um, just using bits of string and perhaps an old windsurfing mast. But to be honest, I haven't had the time to get round to it because I'd say that is a good half a day to actually work out how to do it and film it and everything. So once we're into the season and I don't have to do quite as much stuff, thanks Isaac, um, then I'll get onto that. I have got all these videos that people have requested written down in a list and I'm gonna work through them as I get time to do them. Some days I'll have more time than other days. so. On the days when I have less time, I'll make the videos that don't take as long to make, if you know what I mean. Um, and But the videos of sailing, they strangely don't take long to make, because all I have to do is pull the sail up on a boat, get on the boat and go out sailing and just uh, talk. And then I get back, put a start and a finish on it and it's done. So the actual sailing videos are pretty quick. I'm really looking forward to also making this uh, start line video, which I think we talked about this last week, uh, holding your position for the start of a race, um, which is gonna be very good. Uh, Calvin, you could wrap your aluminium tube with paracord for a nice time. Well, there's a suggestion. Um, I don't actually know what paracord is, but um, everybody likes a nice time. Um, I should know, I'm in the, the nice time business. Um, but yeah, I've, anybody suggesting a nice time is very welcome. Frank asks, do you still recommend the Delkin Fat Gecko camera mount? Yes, I do. This thing is an absolute bad boy. It's basically a suction mount with two suckers on it, which will stick to any flat surface uh, very nicely indeed. But with that mount, if you're putting it on the boat, definitely put it, definitely tie it on because that mount is pretty heavy. Um, and if it falls off the boat, your camera on the mount is gonna go straight to the bottom. There we go. All right, just scrolling back. We've got Chris with the Dart 18. Aha, uh -huh. good question. So Chris asks, he's, uh, he's quite interested about the Hobie 18 Classic. The Hobie 18 Classic was designed uh, basically because some people didn't like the Hobie 16 because 
if you're a heavyweight sailor, the Hobie 16 doesn't carry the weight so well. And also, uh, the 16 does have its problems with tacking and stuff, which some people don't want the hardships of a boat which is difficult to tack. They want a boat which is easier to tack. Um, so Hobie made that Hobie 18 Classic, which has got dagger boards, um, lots of volume, similar, same width as the 16, similar amount of sail area, but it's got an absolutely enormous jib as well. The Hobie 18 Classic is fast. I would love to get my hands on one again and see how fast it will go, because I think there's some potential there. And I don't think there's many classics at all on the speed stick. If you've got a classic, get on the stick. Um, but um, what happened was, to quote Jeffro, um, Hobie dropped the 18 because they brought out the Hobie Tiger and they didn't want to have two boats in the range competing with each other. This was Hobie in Europe. I'm not sure if the same thing happened in the USA. Um, yes, yeah, so I hope he brought out the Tiger to replace the 18 Classic, but the Tiger turned out to be a bit juicy for a lot of people. There's quite a lot going on with deeper dagger boards, a bit more fragile. Um, so then they came out with the Pacific, which was like the Tiger, but with all of the delicate and um, very tweakable bits taken off. So then the Pacific became kind of like the the kind of uh, 18 foot go-to, this boat will do everything you want, but if you want to go and race Formula 18, you need a Tiger. Then after the Pacific in the timeline, Hobie dropped the Tiger as the Wildcat came out, which is even more fragile than the Tiger, but much quicker around the course. And then after that, Hobie dropped the Pacific and came out with the Pearl which Damien in Maputo, Mozambique has got. And the Pearl looks like a tiger, but it's got a different type of centerboard and it's less fragile than the tiger. So that is the whole of the Hobie 18 timeline there. I think there's also something else that was there along the way, but I can't remember what it was called. So there we go, Chris. I hope that, um... oh, how does the Pacific compare? Yeah. Um... Yeah, it's pretty good, but I haven't sailed an 18 Classic for such a long time uh, that I couldn't really comment accurately. But the, the 18 Classic has got that Hobie 16 feel where there's quite, to be honest, there's quite a lot of flex between the hulls, whereas the, the Pacific doesn't have that flex and feels a lot more solid. The Pacific is wider as well. It's a lot more sort of tank-like, whereas the 18 Classic is a bit more nimble, perhaps. Okay, so I think we have reached our destination. All right, so before anybody asks any more questions, I'm going to say goodbye. I'm going to say thanks for watching. And um, if you're interested, um, there's some new exciting tiers which I've just launched on my Patreon page. And part of this... Um, is actually um, one of the benefits of joining this Patreon tier is you can then message me before the Q&A session and I'll then answer your question first. Um, so you don't have to, if there's something specific and, you just, and you've only got five minutes, then maybe you want to um, have your question answered before having to wait for others uh, beforehand. Also, with the new tiers on my Patreon page, um, I'm offering a face-to-face. -face... Thank you, Marco. Always a pleasure. Nice to have you there. Um, offering face-to-face -face consultations if you're thinking of buying a boat or perhaps there's something specific. Cheers, Craig. Nice to have you on board. Um, see you again soon. Yeah, so face-to-face um, -face consultations um, using... Uh, something like Skype or WhatsApp or maybe probably Facebook Messenger I think is good yeah Steve is onto it there it's worth it but um, yeah so there you go check out my patreon page head over to totaljawrider.com 
If you want to get a t-shirt, that's another way of supporting the channel. Uh, send me an email if you want a flag or if you want a vest top, which will be hand printed here in Vasiliki. Mm. It will, of course, be sent from Greece. So we are rolling the dice on the postage, but that does seem to be the way of things at the moment with anything and where it's coming from. Okay, so thanks very much. We'll see you again soon. Ah, oh, Ricky Nielsen, dollars. Yeah, you should get out here, man. Book your flights, Rick, and get out here. Um, just to communicate with Rick quickly. Okay, Rick, here's what you need to do. Book a flight to Amsterdam. Don't spend that time in Amsterdam like you usually would. Instead, get a flight from Amsterdam to Athens, then get on the bus to Athens, and you could be here, probably not tomorrow, but maybe on Friday, and we'll go out for dinner. Perfect.